Well, hello, everybody. How's it going? We're going to be working on the beast today. The beastly beast. You know, I'm looking through the manuals, and I seen a number written up here. 518785-8541. So, I'm looking through this, and I'm seeing all kinds of stuff he wrote on here, so... Oh, there's a model and serial number. I have no idea why this bush hog is in there because I don't have one of them. So I called them up, and it's the guy, it's the parts company for this tractor. I'm like, holy shit. So I just came from Advanced Auto Supply. I got the conventional motor oil for it, 1040. I got a frame filter because I forgot I got a filter anyways. So I'm going to dump the oil. And I'm going to grease it. And what I did is I have already ordered through them. I ordered, so this is right turn. I've ordered the left turn. I've ordered the main pad. I ordered the knob for the parking brake. And then I ordered the cap. 100 bucks. <laughs> 100 freaking dollars. All of this cobbly ass bullshit here is going to go away. Because these these are not supposed to be like that. The guy said they only have about an inch movement in it. So I just happen to have some heavy plastic pipe over there on the bench that I'm going to use for spacers. Because, you know, I want my stuff to look decent. I don't want to look like it's all cobbled as shit like back here. You know, with, with freaking car bearings on it and all this other garbage. It's like, give me a break. Then I'm going to look into why this is has a little bit of play in it. Um, I'm going to take the back wheels off, buff them out, paint them. Um, I'm probably going to scuff this down and just kind of lightly spray it. You know, not make it brand new shiny, just lightly spray it to make it black, but not new black. If I had a flat black, that'd be the cat's ass. But this is a 1993. I wrote it on the frame. I thought it was like an 85, 86. Guy says, nope, it's a 93. I'm like, great, that's cool. So we're going to change the oil. We're going to grease the shit out of it. And we're going to clean it up, straighten it up. Um, as you can see, this side is straight, semi-straight. looks a little bent down. This has got a kink in it. You can obviously see that kink in it. We're going to fix that. And then we're going to come over here, and we're going to straighten this cover out better than Joe doesn't know how to use a freaking hammer did. You know, so I'm going to get this straighter. Look at this shit. Really, you couldn't get this straighter than that. Some people, you know, they just don't know how to do shit. Stuff like this, what you do is you put a piece of flat metal in your vise. And that's what you use for the edge when you hammer on it. So, basically, I'm going to be using just a piece of square metal. And it's going to be clamped in my vise. Probably, you know, kind of like on edge like this and I'm just going to roll my panel around to bend it wherever I got to hit it back in the shape so wicked simple it looked nice when it's done so I just had it running I got it warmed up um, ooh, oil filters nice and warm that's cool I got the fuel gauge working as soon as you turn the key on the fuel gauge pegged wide open I checked the fuel and the fuel is it's, it's almost full but looking at the gauge now Whenever you turn the key on, it used to peg. It doesn't peg anymore. It stays right there. So that's about how much fuel I've got in it. Um, the amp works. The temperature works. I saw that move up. And every, everything works. Would you shut up? You scared the shit out of me, you dick. Um, so this is a deck engagement. I've engaged the deck because I never did that before. And I'm going to check the... Everything. I'm checking everything. I'm going to go right through this thing. And, you know, I'm not going to paint it all up to make it look nice. I'm going to clean it. And that's going to be about it. Um, I want to check this. Make sure the gear lube's full on all of these. Um, yeah, it looks like nobody really greased this thing that much. I mean, they did, but not how I would grease it. You know, I grease it until I see grease squirt out, then I stop. See, okay, it's full. But I'm uh, 
Oh, I'm dumping the antifreeze too. So the antifreeze got a dump there. Yep, that's warm. And uh, I've got jugs of it up here. I've been wanting to get rid of. Now I can get rid of it because these are pre-mixed. Antifreeze, do not add water. So there's a gallon of, there's a gallon there. There's some here. So I've got a lot of that to use up. So I'll put this over on the floor. I'm getting ready to dump the oil. So I got my bucket under there. And I'll dump the oil in a minute. And while the oil is draining, I'll be going through everything else. So is that all the antifreeze I got? Dexcool cannot use that in this machine. Um, can't use... Uh, What's this stuff? Zero twentieth. My wife's car. It's IQ. IQ. Spark. Spark. And this is just some synthetic ten thirty for. I don't know. I don't even know why I got that. I don't even know how that got up there. But yeah. So worst case, if I don't have enough antifreeze, I just go get some. But this is the shit people. You're supposed to do on your cars. A lot of people don't know this stuff. You're supposed to change your stuff on your cars. Your tranny fluid, you know, just like your engine oil. Um, your brake fluid, nobody in their life ever changes their freaking brake fluid. Wow, that came out weird. Brake fluid? Yeah, you're supposed to change your brake fluid. Look in your owner's manual. Your antifreeze, you're supposed to change that. I think every five years. So, yep. Tomorrow morning, that goes in the shop. And we'll we'll see what happens, you know. We'll see what happens. I've called since I'm on a rambling spree at the moment. I try not call. I talked to the seller. Well, now it's finally getting warm in here. Sixty-five. I got this guy running. That is not handling it. That little piece of shit will keep this semi-warm. I don't think it's going to be able to do it in the winter because I don't think it can keep up. Um, yeah. And no, it's not because this fan is running, but that comes on when I walk in. But I've had this thing over 70 and it just won't get there. It's like this damn room, you don't realize how insulated this is. The ceiling's insulated. That wall, this wall, that wall. I mean, everything's insulated. It's even double insulated. Because, you know, it's insulated here, and it's insulated inside the wall. So, the only place it's not double insulated is here. But there's insulation inside this wall. If I put a piece of foam on the outside, then it would be double insulated, but... Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand why it's not really holding the heat. So I may have to come up with another solution that I could probably remove that and I could fix a hole in the wall or whatever is behind there just by putting another piece of that shit in. And if I can get like a toe kick heater, an electric one, oh yeah, I can go all the way up the side here, under here and have the heat blasting out from under here. You know, yeah, it's a little cold back there. There's some blue tile from the wall. I got to think of something because I think it'll keep it above freezing. But I don't think it's going to be good enough. That's my problem. I mean, it's 35 out now. And the wind's blowing like a bastard. As I'm sitting here, I don't feel any breezes or any wind noises or nothing. But, yeah... And the wall feels warm. Yeah, this wall. This is an outside wall, and it feels warm. Yeah, all the walls feel warm in here. Even the shower wall doesn't feel cold at all. I see a little crack up here, but I mean, come on, something like that. All oh, this insulation right there. You can see the paper insulation in there, but... Yeah, so this is the only thing I got to really worry about is keeping it warm in here. So, I know PEX can freeze and it won't break, but I don't want to get to that point. So, I'm turning Pee Wee back on again. 
Well, see, once I close this door, you know, it's fairly tight in here. So, oh, Junior, Junior just left. Must be he didn't see me in here. Yeah, I got my heater running. I shut it off. Hey, buddy, there he is. There's Junior. You got to be in every video, don't you? You're just coming in here to steal something, aren't you? Huh? Yeah. Were you coming in to steal? Yeah. What you have today? You had Burger King? Yeah, you had Burger King today. He had an onion ring. He actually ate half of an onion ring. And he had a little piece of cheese stick. Little fatty boy. My cat almost took my fingers off when I gave him a piece of cheeseburg. He doesn't just take it nice. Junior will take it very nice out of your hands. Louis, my cat, will just rip it out of your fingers. And... Today's video is brought to you by Rockstar Punched Hardcore Apple Non-Alcohol No, there's no alcohol in it It's it's delicious It's got like a Like a Granny Smith apple taste to it, Like a little bit of a sour to it It's kind of, it's different, I like it My wife hates it, I let her try it She goes, ugh She goes, what's that aftertaste? I said, that's called energy, baby Drink it and like it so i'm going to kick the heat back on in here i'm going to dump the oil and then i'm going to get covered with grease speaking of grease i do have a second tube but autozone oh here's the, the plastic i'm going to use the spacers right here if that don't work i might have to use this or something um this is high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease now they say disc brake because disc brakes get really hot and the heat transfers to the hub so it's got to be really good grease i said where's all your grease say he says right there there's four tubes in this huge rack the size of my workbench and there's three tubes of this and one tube of lithium i'm like holy shit where's all your grease he said that's all we got he said we can't get any i'm like oh boy I'm telling you guys, it's coming. You better stock up on shit. If you need it, you better stock up. Because people are starting to run out of stuff. You know? Wait till the diesel stops. If it does. If they can't figure something out and the diesel stops flowing, we are screwed. Big time screwed. You know? That means the train stops. The truck stops. Deliveries stop. You know, you order something from Amazon, good luck getting it. You're not going to get it because there's a lot of the trucks run on diesel. Some are electric, but some are, you know, diesel. So, and then I'm screwed, but I still have my other, my zero turn. I just bought this to say, hey, neighbors, who's got the big dog on the street? Now, if I wanted to do that, I would have bought the goddamn 16 foot wide cut. But anyhow, that's that. I'm happy with this. I'll be pulling these rims off. I'll wire brush them up on my drill. I got that wire thing. I'll be pulling them off, painting the rims. And, uh, yeah, we'll do that. These I'll just clean up. I'll just clean these rims up. But this is, this is ridiculous just to let your rims get that disgusting looking. You know? And then this way, when I get it up off the ground in the back, I'll know if there's anything wrong with the rear end, you know? But from what I'm seeing, oh yeah, okay, so this got a little bit of a tilt out that way, and this does too. Okay, so they're they're probably straight. You guys know how to do that, right? You take a, you take your ruler, a long ruler, and you lay it across your tire, and drop a string line down, mark it on the floor, do it on the other side, and then you do it with the front. And that'll tell you measure the distance between the two. And that'll tell you if both your wheels are straight or if one's in like that. Or it's like this. Rock and roll. Right? All right. Enough farting around. I'm going to get back on this thing. Get some cleaning up, greasing up, oil changing, body work, nut scratching, puppy dog petting. And I'll catch you later. Have a good one. And... Here's a freaking beginner mistake. Always remember to put the goddamn oil plug in before you dump four quarts of oil in your machine. Or you'll end up with this. Well, at least I flushed the system out. Okay, 
After cleaning up the Exxon Valdez disaster here, I'm going to have to take another trip to the store and spend another freaking 30 bucks. Um, I didn't have as much as I thought I did. Um, I thought I, I'm going to put the whole thing in, but I didn't. So, it's actually, it's actually reading. Yeah, it's reading on the ad mark. So, not as bad as I thought. But I'm telling you one thing. If it wasn't for them paper towels, six packs sitting there, I'd been screwed. Because I used four of them. Because I had one out of the package that I used. And then what I did was I took my mixed gas, my two-stroke oil. I dumped gas all over the top of it and uh, to break up the oil so I can get it off the floor. And then I used some of my carb cleaner to finish that off and then uh, then I did the hokey pokey and slapped myself in the head you know it's the first time I've ever done that yeah I'm thinking too far ahead of what to do next on this thing and I screwed up so yeah, shit happens got a nice frame oil filter in there now this big ass honking freaking plugs on there I started rushing no I'm American but I started rushing and uh, that's what happens. Stupid mistake, but I was hoping I had another quart. I'm probably only going to need like another quart, but I'll call up the Agway in town, see if they have any uh, regular 10W40 conventional oil up there. They should have. That'll save me some time. But yeah, it looks like a lot came out. There's a lot of oil that came out of there. It's black as shit. So I don't think it's been changed in a while. And you can see the black mixed in with the clear or the brownish color. So, oh well, shit happens, you know. You just got to be ready for it. And uh, no big deal. The mess is cleaned up. And I'll move forward. Um, over time, the dust and stuff. Actually, you know what I can do? I hope I didn't empty my vacuum cleaner. Because you might think this is stupid, but if this is full of dust... Is it? Yes, it is. It's full of sawdust. You go like that. There you go. Now you're going, Andy, what your garage floor was so clean? What did you just do? It's called final absorption. A little sawdust on there, which is cool. That'll keep it from me tracking it into the house. And then in a you know, probably a few weeks, you'll never even know that I dumped oil all over the floor. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right on here and uh, go from there. So, yeah, you can brush this right in, you know. It's, it's your painting, little pinks and blues and browns, and just brush it in. It's your picture. Make it look pretty. There. All right, enough of that horse shit. So... This, this worked out good. I forgot all about my vacuum. See, even footprints, like right there, you got to cover that shit up. Because then I'll end up tracking it in the house. And then and I'm actually wearing my good sneakers today, my new ones. And then I do some stupid shit like this. So, Ron, if you're laughing, I'm coming over to your house and kick you right in the old left one. I'm sure you've done it too. All right. Continuing forward.